Hi everybody, this is Gad Sat for The Sad Truth. Today I'd like to briefly discuss a set of cognitive traps that people succumb to uh, in the context of uh, scientific reasoning and statistical inferencing. And uh, this set of traps uh, occur not only among uh, the populace, lay people, but it also manifests itself uh, among seasoned academics who you might otherwise think that they should uh, not be succumbing to these cognitive traps. So let me see if I can offer a few examples to give you a sense of uh, how these uh, uh, errors in thinking manifest themselves. So let's suppose that I were to tell you that uh, on average men are taller than women. This is undeniably true. It's a biological fact at the population level. Uh, however, somebody in the audience might raise their hand and say, uh, well, but then how do you explain the fact that uh, I know some woman X who is taller than some man Y? Well, of course, we could all generate such examples, and yet it doesn't invalidate the statement that holds true at the population level. If we think of the WNBA, the female basketball professional league, uh, these women are very tall, so much so that most of them are likely to be taller than most of the men that uh, we all know. And yet that reality doesn't in any way invalidate the original statement that I made. Let's push this uh, example to another context. If I were to tell you that on average men have evolved a preference to mate with younger women than say postmenopausal women, incidentally it doesn't take much of a evolutionists to understand why that preference would have evolved. Uh, somebody in the audience, if I'm giving a lecture somewhere, might raise their hand and say, but then how do you explain the cougar effect? But then how do you explain the fact that my Uncle Joe is dating some older woman, Linda? Oh boy, Darwin is dead. Back to the drawing board. Uh, if I were to offer a set of mechanisms that map onto a survival instinct in human, a sur survival instincts are found in all sorts of species, as you would expect via natural selection. Well, somebody will raise their hand and say, but then how do you explain suicide? Suicide is antithetical to survival. Ah, smarty pants? Uh-oh, Darwin is dead. Uh, if I were to offer a set of mechanisms that map onto uh, reproductive goals, uh, somebody will then raise their hand and say, but then how do you explain the existence of homosexuality? How do you explain the existence of asexual people? How do you explain the fact that uh, people can choose to be celibate? Think of, say, Catholic priests who forego their reproductive interests. Oh, oh, Darwin, you're dead. Time to find a new theory. Uh, let's take another example. If I were to say that species, including humans, would have evolved a uh, discriminating ability to invest more in their kin than, say, random strangers, non-kin, uh, as would be expected via the mechanism of kin selection, then somebody will raise their hand and say, but then how do you explain the existence of adoptions? How do you explain the fact that we love our pets so much? Clearly, we're not genetically linked to our cats and dogs, smarty pants. And so you can see in all of these examples the general cognitive trap that people are succumbing to. They, they listen to an evolutionary or biological principle that is true at the population level, and then they scan their memory bank to come up with an exemplar that supposedly then refutes the mechanism that holds true at a different level of analysis. This trap is so pervasive that uh, I think that I can probably cull a sufficient number of examples and make a full-length book treatment of, of the subject matter uh, worthwhile to pursue. So stay tuned to see if I actually take on this project. Uh, please subscribe to The Sad Truth and spread the word. Looking forward to seeing you again. Cheers. Ciao.